we're welcoming Lute Love back to the loft. Sis, congratulations, not only on your new journey into motherhood, but you're making it look so darn fly. I mean, the swag, the combos. <laughs> Even during lockdown, you've got mothers all over the country asking, how? <laughs> <laughs> Mama, thank you so much. Um, how I've got a an incredible support structure in my household. Um, I've got two amazing, phenomenal women um, who help me every single day with these two little beautiful babies that I have. Um, I've got an incredible team of women in a career space that are helping me navigate this life. You know, I've got my mom on the line twenty four seven. My little brother's also there. I've just I'm just in such a a great place. So how do I do it? With lots of planning, lots of help, um, lots of meditation, <laughs> lots of prayer, and sleep whenever I can if I get the opportunity. So, girl, the last time you yes. were on the show, you were a party of one, but now fast forward to 2020, you're a party of three. So what has motherhood been yeah. like for you so far, especially with twins? It's been a complicated journey. It was very, it started off very hard. Um, you know, I really struggled with my pregnancy journey because I had initially planned to not have children. Um, and so when I found that I was pregnant, at the same time I found out that I was having twins. So it was a lot to take in and it took quite a while for me to actually adjust and be comfortable with the fact that I'm going to be a mother. And I think even um, post birth, it took me about three months to settle into understanding that I'm a mom, um, becoming attached to my kids. Um, so it was quite a journey, a difficult one. Um, but it's getting so much better now because, you know, it's so fun. They're growing up, they're saying words, they're playing, they're responsive. They say all sorts of fun, crazy things. And I'm finding my feet as well. You know, obviously there's, there's, there's dad as well who was there supporting and walking us through. But I think when you're a mom, you really just want to be around women most of the time because you feel like they understand, you feel like they get it, you know, what you're feeling, you know, it's a very jarring experience. But it has taken some time and I didn't sleep and I still sometimes don't sleep. But the first year was quite overwhelming. But now I'm in a much better place, much more confident about, you know, making decisions that I need to make as a mom, um, thinking about my kids, thinking about myself and where I fit in. Um, and it's been a really empowering and a beautiful experience. It's breastfeeding week and we're chatting to mothers on their experience of breastfeeding. And for many women, it doesn't come naturally. What has your experience been like? I really, to be, I struggled so much with breastfeeding. Um, it's not an, you know, it, it sounds, it sounds beautiful. The idea of it sounds beautiful, mm -hmm. but there's a lot that goes into, into breastfeeding, especially emotionally. It's emotionally draining. It's physically draining. You always have to make sure that you, you know, you're eating a lot. Um, you're drinking a lot of liquids, um, which can be very exhausting and jarring, especially in the first three, six weeks when you're, you're trying to recover from your operation if you had a c-section like i did um so it's a lot going on all the time and there's no pattern you know and when you have two kids who want to be fed at the same time and you're kind of having to carry them like rugby balls and position them and make sure that they're comfortable and make sure one is latching and one slips off you have to figure it out it's it's quite an exhausting thing and i remember the one day i was in tears my mom was sitting in front of me and i was in tears i was crying while i was breastfeeding because it was just too much um and the second thing that i struggled with was making um enough milk for both of them, I realized that I actually wasn't making a lot of milk. And so we had to introduce um, formula as a top up in, in quite early in their journey. Mm. And I, I had this whole idea in my head of wanting to breastfeed and wanting to connect. Um, and, and I had this whole experience. And after some time, I realized I'm not enjoying this. This is not fun. This is not nice. This is painful. I'm crying. It's I, I hate the whole experience. I'm not enjoying it. Um, and so I'm going to let it go. And that's what I did. Um, from month two going into three, but I stopped. I stopped breastfeeding them. Um, I, I figured that, you know what, formula is fine, it works. We, we struggled with finding the right formula and eventually found the right one after having a conversation with my feed. Yeah. And after that, I was just like, it's okay. You don't have to breastfeed. I think every woman wants to, yeah. but you don't have to. And obviously breastfeeding has a lot of perks, you know, um, you know what it does for the kids, the nutrients, the connection, but for me, it didn't make sense. And so I let it go. And you need to do what's good for yourself, because if you do what's right for you, you'll do what's right for your kids. You know, um, I did some um, interviews and I had conversations about it. And, and you know, some moms were quite upset um, at, at what I was saying, because I was just like, if, if it doesn't make sense, don't do it. Now, you have said goodbye to Speedstar and the hip hop floor for a much earlier yeah. time slot on Metro FM. Girl, how are you dealing waking up 6 a.m. to 9 a.m.? And more than anything, how then have you kicked into the swing of things, getting back into the industry after the babies? And how are you dealing with all those activities? 
Um, the first thing, uh, Metro FM, that time slot is absolutely perfect, um, especially now that I'm broadcasting from home. So between 6 and 9 a.m., the girls are asleep. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm downstairs. So if anything happens, I can literally, literally run upstairs and, and help in the situation. They now wake up between eight and nine. And by the time they wake up, there is, you know, one of my awesome ladies that's helping me at home, ready to help with whatever it is that they need. Um, waking up has never been a struggle. I think I've been training, especially now as a mom, you know, you always wake up in the middle of the night. They still wake up for what they So I'm really used to the rotation of having little sleep, um, but still figuring out a way to kind of get through the day and getting back into work has been uh um it's been fun but it's also been hard um because i think what happens when you're a new mom is you become very unsure um and and the things that you liked before you were a mom are not the things that you like right now so i've really taken my time to try to figure out what i like what i enjoy um which is which is part of why i left you know absolute hip-hop it was just time for me to grow in a different direction i want something else for myself i've done what i've needed to do in that space I've ticked off the boxes and it was time for me to grow. It being Women's Month, it, the month of August, and here on Afternoon Express, it's all about finding out what you want to hand down to your daughters. So essentially, what legacy do you want to leave behind and how important is the role of a mother in society today? Um, the, the, the role of a mother is everything in society today. They are the center, they are the pulse, they are love, they are growth, you know. Um, and for me, leaving a legacy for my daughters is beyond the material world that we live in, beyond career, beyond all these things that we want to build and tick off all these boxes. I think it's important for my daughters to know who they are and where they come from. I think it's important for my daughters to be in touch with their spiritual and cultural side. Um, those are things that I'm learning about myself, where I come from as my cousin, and where I'm going. Um, and, and I'm on a spiritual journey myself. So those two things, um, but I think it's important for, for, for little girls, especially to know who they are at their core, to know what drives them, to know how powerful they are, no matter what the world tells them about themselves, and to celebrate being a divine feminine. Well, Lute, it seems like it takes a long road to get there because what you are challenging South Africans with isn't easy, but it is possible. We've seen you do it yourself, and we've seen you become the strong fierce to be reckoned with within the South African entertainment space. Thank you so much for joining us this afternoon on Afternoon Express. And please do see Say hello to the, the little bundles of joy that you've been <laughs> holding like rugby balls there from us here. <laughs> Goodbye, my love. Thank you, Balissa. Take care. Bye. Now, South Africa, there you have it. One of South Africa's sweethearts, Lute Love, sharing how she's been able to do it all with those two gorgeous twins. If you are a mother and you are hustling and you are kind of navigating the space of breastfeeding, please do head over to our social media platforms. Use that hashtag Afternoon Express and let's continue the conversation there.